Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. We have decided to light up the necessary points about line or pipe sizing. In this video, we'll go over the sizing procedure and then apply the principles into a specific problem by using Excel calculations. What do we understand when we talk about line or pipe sizing? Is it a mechanical design or do we really decide the color of the pipe? Not actually. The process engineers are responsible for finding out the inner diameter of the pipe where the main process fluid passes through. So why we find the inner diameter of the pipe rather than the outer one? Actually, this is your question. Please note your answer down. So we can exactly say that the line sizing is the procedure where the diameter of the pipe is found. There are various methodologies and therefore the tons of equations to carry out the line sizing. But here, the procedure is so important. In line sizing, you have to take into account two necessary factors that are dramatically affecting the sizing procedure. The first one is typical velocity range of fluid. For this factor, there are some standards that had been accomplished by relying upon the past experience. For liquids, the desired range is between 1 and 3 meters per second, while this range may alter by fluid types. And the second factor is pressure drop allowance per 100 meters of the pipe. For this factor as well, you can find some standards to base your line sizing on. Well, after recalling two essential checkpoints in our line sizing, we can go for sizing procedure itself by working on the specific problem. We are asked to size the pipe for delivering the water and oil mixture to further processing, and we are given with the input values for carrying out our sizing that you can see here. Also, we know the specifications for our checkpoints. The velocity range is given as 1 to 3 meter per second, and the allowable pressure drop is maximum 0.2 bar per 100 meter length of the pipe. First, your sizing starts with initial pipe diameter guess. Here, you're free to say any nominal diameter by using the standard diameter schedule, where the inner diameters alter by depending on the sort of the pipe, which is installed in your process. You will use the schedule like this. First, guess the nominal diameter, then find out the thickness of the pipe material, and then you're going to subtract two times thickness from outer diameter of the pipe in order to reveal the inner one. I can say that the reason for that can be quite understandable after looking at the provided figure. The figure actually shows that inner diameter of the pipe is bordered by two times thickness, and they are arranging the outer diameter together, right? So, let's guess the pipe diameter. We're given with the schedule for this steel pipe, so we will have a look on its appropriate data illustration. My initial guess will be 4 inch size. Okay, um, let's intersect these values. Schedule 40 and 4 inch. Uh -huh. Here we can see the proper outer diameter, which is 114.3 millimeter, and the wall thickness is 6.02 millimeter. And let's apply these values in Excel. Our inner diameter is 114.3 minus 2 times 6.02, and then as you might guess, we have divided it to 1000 just for getting the unit of meters. Alright, we got our first inner diameter. Then, if you are working on the existing system, you'll probably know the volumetric flow rate of the fluid. So this time, you will need the continuity equation, where you will use your guessed initial diameter to find out your first checkpoint, which is velocity. If your velocity is in the desired range, you will go for the following step. If not, you will go back and make another guess, and iterate it until satisfying your first checkpoint for line sizing. So, we have the volumetric flow rate and the inner diameter, so we can easily find out the velocity by using the continuity equation. So let's apply it on Excel by using the equation. Well, the calculated velocity is not in the desired range, so we have to go back and guess another pipe diameter. So, from the continuity equation, we can see that more diameter means less velocity, so we should increase the pipe diameter, right? Our next assumption is 5 inch nominal diameter, where the corresponding values of outer diameter and wall thickness are about 141.3 and 6.55, respectively. 
Now, let's put them into the diameter calculation. And yeah, now we are in the desired range. After that, you will need to go for the second checkpoint, which is a pressure drop. Here, you will use the following equation to find out the pressure drop per length of the pipe. Well, let's have a look in the parameters inside the equation. So we know the length, which is L, diameter, D, velocity, V, rho is a density, but what about F here? So F is a friction factor which makes our work to get longer. So the friction factor is essential phenomenon that you have to consider. So to reveal that in the first step, you need to find out the Reynolds number by using the following equation. Nice. Here we will first find the Reynolds number using the equation, which will help us to find out the type of fluid that our piping deals with. In industry, because of high production need, the flow regime is not laminar or even transient, so the flow regime is mainly turbulent, so that we will make our calculations based on that. Just inserting the parameters into Excel, we can find out the Reynolds number. Okay, multiply them and divide by viscosity. Well, our Reynolds number is quite high, which exactly shows that our flow is in turbulent regime. After knowing the Reynolds number, we will need the relative roughness, which is found just by dividing the roughness to our guest diameter. Uh huh, roughness divided by diameter. Well, we have two factors in our hands. Reynolds number and relative roughness that are the main elements of our Moody chart. So using these fluids on my hand and our typical Moody chart, we can find out the friction factor. So please note that this is not only the way to reveal the friction factor, you can use alternative ways to reach that as well. So using the Moody chart, I will reveal the approximate value for friction factor, which is about 0.017. Alright, we have found the friction factor, which was the missing point in our pressure drop calculation. Now we will go over finding the second checkpoint, which is pressure drop. If it is in the desired range, everything is okay. If not, you will need to go back to the first step, change your initial guess, and repeat the calculations till you meet the specifications of your checkpoints. Then what are you waiting for? Let's put the variables into Excel and calculate the pressure drop per 100 meter of the pipe section. I'm taking the length as 100 meters because the standard pressure drop is given by per 100 meters of the pipe section. Also, here on the length part, we will need to add miscellaneous losses as the pressure drop changer, which is almost 20 inner diameter of the pipe. And our allowable pressure drop is given with bar. So we have to divide it by 10 to power 5 and see whether we met these specifications or not. Amazing! We have met the second specification as well. Now you are on the way to be done. We have almost completed our line sizing. But let me tell you something. Here, higher diameter of the pipe means higher cost of installation and even maintenance. Therefore, as an engineer, you should carefully work on getting the optimum result. I mean, if you met the range of velocity in the pressure drop, do not say that, yeah, I have completed the line sizing. So here, you just have to give a try to lower the diameter that you guessed and play with the numbers and check that whether is it possible to meet these specifications with smaller diameter or not. And finally, if you believe that you have found an optimum result, then you have sized the pipe or line where the valuable fluids will pass through. I hope you got to learn something from this explanation. So, see you next time.